Hey Megalithomaniacs, here we are once again at Karahan Tepe in the Tek Tek Mountains of Southeast Turkey. As you know from my previous videos, and this is all over the internet now, this is the sister site to Gebekli Tepe and it dates to at least 11,000 years old. And we're here today in September 2022, we just finished our big tour. We wanted to share with you some more insights. Now we already know about the winter solstice alignment. You can see the previous video here about that where the sun comes through the porthole stone, illuminating the face. But since then we've got more discoveries. There's actually new excavations taking place here, claiming they're finding domestic features, domestic buildings. But what is interesting is the fact that there's elements here which we don't find at many other sites there's lots of human features especially faces and heads we don't get so many of those at other sites like a Beckley Tepe there's interesting combinations of animals there's lots of cut marks here there's an unfinished monolith and we're going to take you around a few aspects of the site today so we can see some other elements in the bright daylight so here we have the serpentine kind of channel going into the main enclosure here and some of the things we've been noticing about this myself Andrew Collins and JJ Ainsworth is that the four at the back are really interesting they're better carved they're higher the taller the four pillars that is and then the six on the other side are less well carved much shorter almost almost half the height so do these represent beings do these actually represent humans in different forms and also we have the kind of almost like serpentine freestanding final pillar there which is like well, half a like portal stone or it's actually like a, a sort of raised serpent coming out of the ground also on the neck you can just about see the scales coming out of the head that's like two or three times the size of a normal human head so what i think one of my theories that i'm putting forward in this article i've done with jj ainsworth is the idea that there's traditions of Enki, the great god, the great Sumerian god, who's written about as being this sort of god of virility, god of water, and also god of wisdom as well. And, and given virility to everything, the water, the land, the farms, the people, everything, abundance in every possible way. And obviously you have this kind of godlike figure, this serpent figure, and Enki is related to the serpent. His symbol is the serpent rising up a caduceus much like the rising serpent possibly here the annular stone or the uh, serpent stone the freestanding pillar then you have all these phallic symbols as well which is another representation of this phallic virility and power that Enki had now obviously Enki and the Sumerian traditions were much much later so was this actually thought about here and then developed into the whole Sumerian tradition later. It may be the case, there's a lot of suggestions that seem to put that forward, that that may indeed be the case. And were they indeed responsible for building this entire site and the other Tas Tepela sites in the region. So we have a very unusual selection of cut marks here, just above really the main enclosure. I must also remember that the central pillars in the main enclosure are really thick compared to what we find at Gebekli Tepe. Gigantic. So these would have been easily as tall as the tallest ones at Gebekli Tepe if you look at the measurements of them. And possibly much thicker, much like we see in the quarry as well. So I'm, I always question if there's something kind of slightly different between here and Gebekli Tepe. So these are remarkable cut marks. Remarkable selection just here, just in the bedrock. Now JJ thinks these are like goddess, almost like goddess receptacles of the, the sacred water, the healing water that would be collected in them. Which makes sense because JJ's got this remarkable theory that this is like a, not just a goddess veneration site, but a major fertility site, which I think really connects also with this male virility aspect, like the phalluses, the stone phalluses, the Enki story that may all fit in. Then we have these very strange little cut marks right here. These are like tiny little ones just carved in the rock there. I mean what are they all about? They're like kind of miniature wells, miniature cut marks. We're at Karahan Tepe and uh, we're on the hill. We're looking down at some of the enclosures that have been discovered 
In front of me here is structure AD, uh, what we call the Great Ellipse. Uh, there, you can't see much of it, is structure AB, which is the Pillar Shrine. And there, where the railings and the walkway is, is structure AA. And these are three interconnected um, installations that all almost certainly figured as part of a single ritual or ceremony that would have taken place here as much as 11,000 years ago. This stone here is like a um, fallen tea pillar, probably one of the ones in the main enclosure. And not only do we have this kind of fox carving on top here, it's upside down from this angle. I'll show you some other images of that. We also got this serpent one in the shadow here, like rising up the lower part of the pillar. Now we didn't notice this until I kind of got a scan of this, but this is like the classic serpent carving we do find at sites like this and Gobekli Tepe, but no, I don't think anyone's really noticed this before. So yeah, we're very pleased to have spotted this. I'll show you it here. And on top, you've got the classic T-shape, kind of made to look like two stones, but it's actually one. And there is actually a kind of fox or cat, or some kind of cat carving on there as well. And this would have been an enclosure itself because you can actually see the bases where pillars may have sat, or certainly stones. So that's intriguing. And obviously just behind that, you've got the uh, sunken AB pit or the pillar shrine, the main enclosure, and this huge area here that's still being excavated. So JJ is just standing next to that pillar with a serpent on it, but also here in the ground, you've actually got a serpent running all the way along down there, underneath this, and then kind of going up here. And it kind of almost feels like it ends in this kind of sunken pool, which could be its head facing towards in between the pillar shrine and the sunken pit. Now this stone is interesting. This looks like a broken piece of a giant porthole stone. And you can clearly see this is all being filled in. So there's stuff still under here yet to be discovered. And it's said that only 1% of Karahan Tepe has been unearthed. And you can't, it's really hard to kind of comprehend the scale of this because it goes way over there, right over there to almost where that caravan structure is. You can actually see these everywhere where there's kind of brown, kind of yellowish brown kind of rubble, like that is to be excavated. All the way over there, right over there. And the same going around the kind of eastern, northern side as well. All over there behind that as well. So it's a huge site. And here's just some of the smaller places that are being excavated. This may be a later kist or even a Roman burial because it said that Romans were up here later at some point as well. But we'll just have a walk around. You've seen most of this in a previous video but there's a couple of features that are really worth pointing out especially the winter solstice alignment. Now we've seen we think there's a notch on the hill that was placed there in prehistoric times which I'll show you in a moment which may in fact be marking where the sun rises on the winter solstice before it beams through the porthole stone. We have a smaller enclosure here. What a massive circular stone here, similar to the kind of plates we see in the museum. So we're looking into the main enclosure here and you can see the scale of this is incredible. And you can see the benches at the back, the huge benches like steps, like giant steps. Even the giant head you can just about see over there. Wow, this is incredible. And they've placed, you know, rubble all around it, but that's one of the large broken pillars in the center there. You can just see how big that is, and I believe <coughs> that is terrazzo floor, some of that. You look carefully enough and you can see it's not just limestone that's been carved and shaped. There seems to be terrazzo features in the construction here. You've got like another, all the stones going around the edge with benches, even like megaliths in between them. Just, it looks like just too much rubble here. It needs, almost needs a bit more attention before we can see it in its full glory. It's claimed that there's actually 18 uh, 
T-pillars in the walls of the ellipse. Um, obviously there were two huge ones in the middle that were larger, They're, they were found fragmented. Most of the actual T-pillars are themselves fragmented. That suggests long-term exposure as opposed to them being deliberately smashed. So that's interesting, that means that this was on show for a very long time. Uh, probably when these younger enclosures around here were still uh, in operation. So in other words, this was, uh, you know, open to the elements for a very long period of time. And we have T-pillars here, just lying around on the ground, broken, broken off. Can't see any carvings on them. You can maybe see like uh, edges of a garment going down the front there. Have another one here. These could be from the main enclosure. They're very big chunks. And we still have T-pillars sticking out of the ground here, look. And they continue all the way over there still to be excavated. But here, we have the top of a T-pillar. It looks like it's got zigzag carvings on it, but I'm not sure if they're just damage or if they're ancient. Another view of the main enclosure. This is currently under excavation. And uh, we still have T-pillars sticking out the ground there. Now we're getting into the realm of the alignment. If we stand here and look in that direction, the top of the hill there is like a notch, like a cairn. And that marks the exact rising point of the sun on the winter solstice sunrise. So that may have been placed there as part of the greater winter solstice alignment, which we discovered here on December the 20th, 2021. Actually going down the hill in that direction, there are other tea stones, there are other enclosures, perhaps marking a route that may even go all the way. There may be stuff under the ground going all the way in that direction. But we just don't know yet because there's been no excavation done on this part of the site yet. Got other tea pillars there. But here is where, if you look straight ahead over this tea pillar here, it, through the middle of the main enclosure, and right through the porthole stone, you can see the head. And this is where, how the sun would have risen, the equivalent of the height of my head, and maybe a little bit taller, and gone through the porthole stone to illuminate that head, which you can see, you can literally see it through the hole right now. Now the porthole stone is actually at an angle, so it's actually, you know, it's actually difficult for it to get through, it's like a smaller space. So you get this slither of light appearing along the head, and then it moves around the face during the process of the winter solstice. But we are literally standing on the alignment now. And I'll show you that in through light. And that's a stone here that appears to mark that alignment. So that may have had a notch in the stone as well, but it's been broken off, so we don't know. But I find that fascinating that we've got proof of the alignment and possible proof of a stone here that aligns with it and over in that direction stones going down and also a notch in the hill in the distance which may have been part of the greater landscape astronomical temple here at Karahan Tepe. So here I am with the co-discoverer of the winter solstice alignment JJ Ainsworth and we're on the alignment now. And JJ, between us, is the stone, the alignment, the porthole stone, the stone head that marks the alignment itself. So this is gonna become like Newgrange, we think, over the next few years, where people are gonna come and visit and witness this and celebrate this turning of the year, marked clearly at this particular site. So what's really interesting about this stone, which we believe marks the alignment going over there towards the stone head through the porthole stone. This is like one small enclosure with one stone in it. And so this could have been very significant. It could have been a very significant spot actually laying out the marking of the alignment through the site. We've been thinking about the alignments, the midsummer and midwinter alignments. We've been able to confirm the midsummer alignment 
uh, towards sunset at uh, the summer solstice. Obviously we know from Hugh and JJ's own work that the midwinter solstice alignment works. So this tr doubly confirms that the solstice was very, very important to these people. Um, and obviously there was a hell of a lot going on here. We know that the snake was important. We've also found out that the leopard has been found on various of the T pillars. Uh, we know that the fox was significant as well. Um, and that really makes sense of a lot of the, um, the astronomical, the sky law, uh, associated with Cygnus, associated with Sagittarius and Ophiuchus, uh, and of course, obviously, the sun at the time of the solstices, which would have regulated the points in the year when these ceremonies and rituals would have been locked into. I think there would have been shamanic nature, very, very deep, and, you know, probably far heavier than what was going on at Quebecly, because all of this is so remote here in the Tec Tec Mountains. This is a higher enclosure which has a giant T-pillar with eight fingers on each hand. So this is utterly unique. We have another large enclosure with high walls here as well. With it. This is a giant kind of porthole stone within it as well. But this one here is very interesting. It has four pillars. One of them being the one with eight fingers on each hand, suggesting perhaps even the builders may have had polydactyly. It also has a V-neck, double V-neck. You can see on this side the arm, the top part of the shoulder almost looks like a bird head or a serpent. If we zoom in on that, just so you can get a sense of that, that is incredible. So it's almost like the arm, really the top of it, where it turns into the eight fingers, really does look like a bird head or a serpent. In front of us is a very interesting enclosure. Uh, there are one remaining very tall T-shaped pillar that has eight fingers on one hand. Now whether that's an accident or by design, we don't know but there are two other smaller uh, stones at the other end of the enclosure. And just to the left of those is a soul hole, unquestionably pointing, we've measured it's about 30 degrees um, east of north. And that makes the actual orientation of the enclosure approximately east, southeast. Uh, and although we can't get an exact um, orientation at the moment that suggests that it may be associated with either one of the cross quarter days or more importantly the uh, the sunrise at midsummer we also have this stone here which looks like it's only recently been uncovered this is a huge portal stone a part of one similar to the giant one found in i think in closure h with the kind of critters and the giant snakes on them but this one's very badly weathered you can see whatever was on it, the critters have kind of being knocked off. But that is that would have been part of a huge stone. And just down there, you can actually see kind of lines, like ridges carved in it as well. But I find this fascinating. So these could be heads, they could be critters, they could be different animals. But this may have been part of a much larger mega porthole stone too big really to be on any part of a roof so was it built into the ground into the walls there's a bit still big debates about this so much yet to be uncovered we're literally standing on that side's excavated and this entire side of Karahan Tepe is yet to be done Here we have 
these very strange crisscross kind of almost like a pattern like notches carved into the bedrock here now people have questioned i know robert shocks looked at this andrew collins has looked at it is this the beginning of like language here at Carahan Tepe you can clearly see mathematical astronomical or language something going on here and they point right to the peak of the hill here as though it's telling us there's something under this rubble which there could well be I mean this hasn't been excavated this top part yet no doubt it will be but what are these though I mean let me know what you think in the comments these are insane I've made a scan of it as well to get more detail. You've got sort of like a female symbol, a serpent. Uh, and there's more actually, slightly over here. There's a few more notches, but I'm not sure if that's anything or if that's just coincidental, just some markings. But next to it, you have all these cut marks, hundreds of them on the peak of Karahan Tebe. So this is the unfinished monolith here at Karahan Tepe. Now this has very interesting features on it actually. Over here we have a couple of cup marks. One of them is like a cup and ring mark. We have it carved all the way around the edge here. And see how thick it is. Now this is interesting. So this could have been for two pillars. But if you actually look at the central pillar in the main enclosure, you'll see that it's very thick, much thicker than those at Gebekli Tepe. So it's much more megalithic, much more chunky, the stones here are. But if we have a little look round here, this gives you clues as to how they actually did it. As you go around, you see they put stones in between it, which may have been used to kind of lever it out. Very, very interesting. Just here, we have a couple of indentations, and that one is odd. That looks like it's a, like a concentric circle kind of cut mark. There's other cut marks there as well. Now they kind of filled it in here, but this gives you a sense of scale as well. But all down here, it was neatly cut. They've done this just to protect it, I think. But all along here, as you can see the shaping around it here. And I believe that they left them here for a reason. This was like the birthplace of the temple, the sacred quarry. And the reason they did this is because it marked a specific spot. It may have been the first ever thing they actually dug out here and they left it here to say, hey, this is the place. This is the birthplace of the sacred temple. So megalithomaniacs, we're just leaving Karahan Tepe. Not going to be back here possibly till December. We might come for the solstice or definitely coming back for our tour next May, which you can join us on, obviously. And it's been a real treat showing you around, looking at some different parts of the site we didn't look at in the previous video, seeing it in the bright equinox sunlight rather than the winter solstice sunrise where it's a bit darker, lower angle of the sun. But here, you see there's no one here. There's excavations taking place. You can actually see the excavation hut there. Nishmi Corral and his team, we bumped into them a couple of times. They're working away. There's new excavations just up there. But yeah, there's a few extra features here. I hope you saw them. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching Megalithomaniacs. And we'll be back here again to give you updates as they occur. Take care, please subscribe. Please become a patron and join us on one of our tours because we get to see so much on at sites like this, at Gebekli Tepe and many other places.